high. Can't stop the fever, Steve. Diana, can I get some more cold packs over here, please? Yep. Right away. White blood count. White oh, blood count. Offer 20,000. I don't like the culture reports. Nothing's working, Steve. We tried every antibiotic in the book. He's just not responding. Steve, we're just going to have to face it, that his body just can't handle all this infection. Jeff, I don't know what more we can do. Well, at least he's putting up a hell of a fight. That's something to hang on to. Okay, if there's any change at all here, Cunningham I want to know immediately. Cunningham called the 7th floor nurse's desk. Dr. Cunningham called the 7th floor nurse's desk. Mrs. Brewer, you wanted me up here? Oh, yes, I did. How's Patty Kelly doing? Dr. Hardy's in with him now, and so is Dr. Weber. It isn't good, is it? A negative attitude is about the last thing a patient or his family needs at this time. I understand. Amy, listen to me. It's just that you cannot wear your heart on your sleeve if you want to be a nurse. Otherwise, you're not going to survive the heartache you see every day. I can handle what happens here at the hospital. It's at home where I'm having the trouble. Is it Laura? Leslie's so worried about her, and so am I. Nobody's heard anything yet? No. And I don't know how much longer Leslie can go on waiting for the phone to ring. Come in. <gasps> Daddy! Hello, darling. Oh, Daddy! Surprise! Oh, am I ever! What a beautiful surprise! How good it is to see you. Oh, it's wonderful seeing you. Mm. You can't imagine how miserable I've been. Oh, I'm sorry, but it was for your protection. I can't stand being cooped up in this house with only my aunt to talk to. <laughs> but I've had time to think. And? I'm no longer in love with Luke Spencer. You don't know how glad I am to hear you say that. You've been waiting to hear that, haven't you? To hear you say it and mean it. I really do mean it. All right. I've come to see you here for two reasons. One, I want you to be ready at a moment's notice to join me on a trip to Europe. <gasps> Daddy, how exciting! <laughs> but don't talk to anyone about the trip. Let it be our secret. I promise. <laughs> and then uh, I have another surprise for you. You know I love surprises. This is quite a special one. It's from Port Charles. How would you like to chat with a lady who is very concerned about your welfare? Susan Moore. No, not Susan. Dr. Leslie Weber. Really? That is surprising. Yes. I thought I'd let her come here for a short visit. Would you like that? Why, yes, I suppose so. There's something I need from Leslie Weber, but I don't want to ask her directly. And what's that, Dad? Well, it's not vital. I'd just like to know the whereabouts of Luke and Laura. There's some important information I need from Luke. And I thought she would sp speak to you more easily than to me. You almost finished with us? Almost. All done. Oh, thanks, Amy. Jesse, what have you got for me? Oh, Steve, um, three phone messages here, and they want you for consultation on two. It's the Jameson boy. He's in trouble. That hip socket is not healing well. Oh, I better get there. See you later, Jeff. All right, Steve. Jesse, do you have any idea where Rose and Joe might be? They were in the cafeteria when I came on duty. Okay, if anybody wants me, that's where I'll be. Okay. Dr. Schaefer, call the lobby desk. Dr. Schaefer, call the lobby desk. Hello, Susan. Hi, Susan. Hi. You here to pick up a uh, check on Patty Kelly? Yeah, I sure am, and I'm also quite worried about Joe. Yeah, that makes two of us. Hey, come on over to the lunch. Okay. Let's talk. Okay. How is Patty, Jeff? Not too good. But last week... It was last week. He's just not responding to the antibiotics we're uh, using on him right now. Oh, Jeff. Do Rose and Joe know how bad it is? Yeah, they know, but they're trying not to face it. Listen, Susan, um, Joe's going to be hit pretty hard if anything happens to Patty. Uh, why don't you try sticking around and help pick up the pieces, okay? Oh, of course. Oh, poor Joe. Listen, he's in the cafeteria if you want to see him. Yeah, yeah, I think I will. I'm going to have to get out to Forest Hills. What? 
you're going to visit Heather? Surprised? Well, yeah. I know that my wife is not one of your favorite people. Well, Dr. Pirelli came to see me, and he seems to think that a visit from a cousin might just help. I have to admit the idea didn't particularly appeal to me at first. I can understand. Well, he finally convinced me to go see her. He has this theory, Jeff, and I think he talked it over with Diana Taylor, too. He thinks that Heather should see people who disliked her, too. That way she can't stay, how did he put it, wrapped up in cotton batting, just surrounded by you and her mother. I don't know. Seeing me might just jolt her back to reality a little faster. That's quite a theory. Yeah, well, it's worth a try. Thanks for caring. I do care, Jeff. <laughs> Not about Heather very much, but I care a lot about you. And about Anne. It's going to work out for the two of you, you know. It was meant to be. I'm going to walk you. Elaine. Dr. Pirelli wants a report after every visitor. Anything we see or hear that may give him some reading on Mrs. Weber's mental and emotional state. She's only spoken a few words, I understand. That's all. Then she seems to slip back into a world of her own. Interesting case, isn't she? Very interesting. So far, no signs of physical violence of any kind. None at all. When she gets out of here, the woman she tried to slip the LSD to could bring charges, you know. She probably will. And Mrs. Weber will exchange one kind of prison for another. I didn't mean to take such a long break. Oh, no problem. Is Mrs. Weber expecting a visitor? I really don't know. She's been sitting there like that for the last half hour, staring off into space. I'd better check her out. Mrs. Weber? Would you like to go back to your room now? Mrs. Weber, do you hear me talking to you? She's been doing so well up to now. No sort of reaction at all. Nothing. I think you'd better make a notation on her chart that she seems to have slipped back into a completely catatonic state. Lounge. I'll buzz her in. Hello, I'm Susan Moore. I'm Heather Weather, uh, Heather Weather's cousin. Oh, yes, of course. Dr. Pirelli said you might be visiting Mrs. Weber. Is it all right if I see her? I'm not really at all sure. Mrs. Weber doesn't seem to be herself today. <laughs> I'm sorry, Miss Moore. I think perhaps we better take Heather back to her room. Hmm? Oh, uh, sure. Whatever you think is best. I did, Steve, but I don't think it did much good. Well, I'm afraid there's not much anybody can do to help at this time. Yeah, well, they went back up to be with Patty. That's kind of strange, Steve. Uh, Joe's got an awful lot of anger going about what happened that night. Well, some stranger knifing a man in the back that way would make anybody angry and frustrated. No, I think it goes a little deeper than that. Now, Rose said some pretty puzzling things about Joe what might happen if Patty dies, how Joe might react. And Patty himself told me not to let Joe seek any revenge. But the man who knifed Patty is dead. Fate uh, took its own revenge. Patty was probably delirious when he said that to you. Could be, but he seemed lucid. He wasn't running the fever that he's got going now. Even so, he's a very sick man. He may have been confused. Could be. Jeff, there's a... There's another reason I want to talk to you. you. You haven't said much about your visit with Heather this morning. 
Uh, no, you're right, I haven't. You uh, seem depressed. Uh, what happened? Well, Heather knew who I was. Weren't you prepared for that? I don't know if I'm prepared for any of this, Steve. But surely you must have known she'd recognize you after all. She told Mrs. Grant to get Jeff. I guess what I'm not prepared for, Steve, is having to live on two levels like this. Wanting Heather to get well so I can marry Anne and... Just... Uh... Feeling compassion for Heather, huh? Yeah. Uh, Jeff, you're a doctor and a human being. Your compassion for Heather reflects in no way upon your love for Anne. No, oh, but what's going to happen to Anne in the long run? Steve, let's face it. That woman out there at Forest Hills... That woman that I barely even know anymore, she's my wife. And I told her I would do everything I possibly could to help her get back. And you will. Dr. Pirelli expects you to do it, and more importantly, you expect yourself to do it. You know, it was rough enough when Heather was sitting out there like a vegetable, not saying anything, just sitting there and staring. But now that she's cerebrating and can talk to me... She actually talked to you? Well, no, not actually, but what she did say was kind of a shocker. What was that? Well, I was just, I was trying to reassure her. I told her I'd be there to help her any way I could. That more than anything in the world, I wanted her to be well. And she looked at me and said, you're my husband. I felt extremely trapped. talk to Ann about this? No. no. I'm not sure I want to tell her about that part of it. Steve, I'm worried. I mean, what if Heather needs me? I mean, really needs me. How's that going to affect my relationship with Ann? Dad, why couldn't we have coffee downstairs? Why do you want to keep me in this room? I wanted to speak to you privately because you haven't answered my question yet. About Leslie Weber coming to see me? I thought I had. About whether you'd help me find out what I need to know. Wouldn't Dr. Weber tell you where Laura is if you'd grown to know her as well as you say? Not necessarily. Remember, she's a mother. I wonder if uh, Laura talked to her on the phone and asked her to keep confidence. I see. And you think perhaps another woman could get through to her? Well, especially a woman who's been the victim of her very own daughter's actions. Leslie feels very badly about that. All right, Dad. I'll try to help you. Fine. I'll call her at the hospital and talk to her there. Okay. Dr. Leslie Weber, please. All right, now wait. Leslie, it's Frank Smith. Oh, I'm fine, and so is Jennifer. I'm here with her in Albany. Well, I did leave rather suddenly. But I've been talking with Jennifer about you, and she'd love for you to come and see, see her. Yes, of course. Well, thank you. Thank you very much, and I'll, I'll talk to you soon. Goodbye. Dad, you said that Luke has some important information you need. Oh, business matters. Too complicated to go into. If you can just find out where Luke is, he and I can work it out together. <laughs> 